We need truth. We need truth. And in order to have truth with the way that things are right now, if you don't have discernment, if you're not prayed up, if you're operating in any, any carnality or any flesh, if you're operating that way, then you're not going to know what the truth is. Because your spirit is going to rise up and it's going to be offended or offensive either way. It's important that we stay under the covering of Christ, under the covering of the Holy Spirit. That way we know what truth is because there's a lot of things that are being said, a lot of things that are going on from the church world to, to the, the world in general, whether it's politicians, whether it's world leaders, whether it's the courts, whether it's anything, we have to know what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. And we have to know what he's saying to us, that it's clear to us what he's requiring and what he tells us. He just doesn't tell us things that we have knowledge. He gives us direction. It's important that we're listening to what the Lord says. I'm just challenging you with this this morning, just for a minute, and I'm going to get into my message. But I want you to understand that one principle, that one truth. We have to have truth, and it only comes by the spirit of truth, the Bible says. It says when he comes, the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, and we know that he's amongst us. And we have to know and distinguish what is that truth, what is right, and what is wrong. And we have to hear what the Lord would say, because there's things that are spoken, like I said, a lot of times, that it's easy to buy into something but no matter how good it sounds or how truthful it sounds, we need the spirit of truth to distinguish what the real truth is. Because God requires each of us to respond by what he tells us what is truth. That's why we have to have that personal relationship. Not just salvation, but the personal relationship of the spirit of God. We have to walk in the spirit. So that then you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. That means, what that means, it doesn't mean it's all the sin and everything. It's talking about the mindset of the flesh. Man is limited. Man is limited. The man of his highest order and his greatest wisdom is limited. It says God's thoughts are higher than man's thoughts. And his ways are much greater than that. And so we have to understand that just because it may not look like, we have to be listening to what the Word of God said. And you can't Understand the Word of God and what God is speaking unless you're in the Word of God. You have to be in the Word of God. I read constantly. I love the Word of God. And the more that I read the Word of God, the more that I find a little, very little that I know. And I'm always searching the Scripture and trying to find out, well, what does that mean or what does this mean? But if I can tell you, if this was the last day, and I'm going to treat every day as the last day. Every day is the last day. Today could be the last day of my freedom. Today could be the last day of us being as a church. Today could be the last day. And I know that when the day of Pentecost come, they were up in the upper room, and they were there praying as they were instructed to do. But on the outside, there was a pandemic going on. There was a sinfulness going on. There was a mess going on like we see today. Nothing's changed. A lot of times we distance ourselves and we're, we're uh, um, privileged to be in this great land to where we have experienced freedoms. We've experienced choices. We've experienced the opportunities to go down and purchase what we want to or buy or live where we want to. But there's many nations that don't have this privilege and we're just watching this thing march away quickly. And you would say, well, well, it sounds like you're in a panic. I'm not in a panic. Because the thing, of what, the thing about it is, the Bible says, when, when sin abounds, grace much more abounds. So when you see all these com things coming, you can look up because your redemption draws nigh. So I'm looking up in the hope of Christ's soon return, but I'm not looking for an escape. A lot of people would like to have the escape and make the escape because it's not comfortable, but that's not what it's all about. I want to go to him because I want to see him face to face. I don't want this mess in my life that I struggle with week after week and day with day after day. The battles that we face and the struggles that we face are just constant because there's this nature inside of me that totally contradicts the life of Christ. And the spirit that lives in me cries out for life, but it's up to me to make a choice and follow after the things that are life. But I have to know the truth. 
I have to be functioning, operating by the Holy Spirit. I have to be in the Word. I have to have a prayer life. Pretty good message. I don't think I was going to preach that. Thank you, Jesus. But like I said, there's so many different things. The Bible says in, in the last days that they would take him out of the synagogues. Think about that. We look back and we say, oh, okay, that's back then. That was to the disciples. That's today. From the threats that they had, just as continued and by grace, we've not had to face some of the threats, the threats here in America. But we're threatened now. I'm not saying there's no pandemic. I'm not saying that there's no death. I'm not saying this thing didn't come out of China. I don't know. I, do, I wasn't there to see it, but that's, that's the word. And I'm not trying to promote one way or the other. But one thing that I am saying, that it's real. And we have to treat it such as it is real. And we need to be considerate of one another. And that's the bottom line. We have to be considerate of one another, whether it's in this pandemic or not. We need to be respectful and considerate of one another. If they require you to wear a mask, wear a mask. I wore a mask. Yes, the other day I walked into the store or into the restaurant, and I don't think I've even been in a restaurant until the other day, but I went into the restaurant and there were some older gentlemen and they had their mask on and we had to scoot to the side to let them buy. And I thought, shame on me. Because they, maybe they were susceptible to something. Maybe I should have had enough consideration for that. It doesn't show that I have any fear. It shows that I have consideration. So it's important that we, we don't get caught up in pride because that, that becomes pride when we begin to judge one side or the other. And we have to be careful about saying, well, they, they're fearful or they're not fearful or they're reckless and they're not reckless. We need to be considerate no matter what that is. Even if I've got to step back and say, you know what? I don't like wearing it. I don't want people to think I'm fearful, but I'm going to wear it because it's consideration for you. That's just another commercial. Like I said, there are many things that I've been thinking and look, and along these lines. And you say, well, you're preaching along these lines of this pandemic. No, I'm preaching of the, of the life that we're facing right now. And God is calling us to a higher level. He's calling us to walk by faith. Quit walking by sight. Quit walking by common sense and start to walk by faith. If the Lord said that he's coming, he's coming. If he says he heals, he heals. If he says he delivers, he delivers. If he says he sends his Holy Spirit, that he would encourage us, that he would lead us into all truth, that he would equip us, then that's what the truth is. And it's that simple. We need to stay with these truths. You know, I can shut the door, turn off the lights, and turn off all the media whatsoever and live out of this book. And be totally at peace. Not because I'm a hermit. Because this is true. And it brings, causes my faith to arrive. But it brings satisfaction. It brings hope. It brings help in those times. And guess what? Then if I could really do that and get in that closet. And achieve that. To where I live that way. Then I can open my door. And I can become help. Hope. To somebody else. We forget about that. So many times we're on a survival mode. And we forget that, that it's not about our survival, it's about the world's survival. If you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and you have that really, you're safe. We're just doing time. We're just doing time. Let's get into our scripture now. John 16 and 1. St. John 16 and verse 1. And I'm just going to start reading, because like I said, I've read four chapters. I'm going to read you four chapters. I know I've been lying to you lately. I've been telling you I'm not doing them, that I do it, but I'm not doing it today. But I want to bring some high points out here. But it says, these things, first verse, these things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever kills you will think that they do God's service. You can say, well, that's not going to happen. Can I remind you of Saul? Can I remind you of Saul? That's exactly what he was doing. He was going around to kill the church. He was dragging, having them dragged out of their house. He had letters to imprison them. So if it was happening back then, you think it's not happening today? You look over in China, you look over in, in uh, Africa, you look at it in, in these different nations, different places, people are being killed on a constant, we just saw the India, we just sent some money to India for their food and everything. They're being killed, they're being killed. They're cutting their heads off. They're killing their children. They're dragging them and raping the women, right? Not only in the streets. And you say, oh, it's a reality. And the, and, the, and the great news about it all is we have what can change that. How do you change? 
Let's support him. Let's pray for him. We put so little value on prayer. We talk about God and we talk about what he could do, but we don't take it to our knees and begin to pray. It's time that we take it to our knees and begin to pray about these things. It's time to get concerned about other people besides myself. Because when I get concerned about the things by myself, I think it's going to expedite the coming of the Lord. I really do. I believe that. I believe things are withheld and things are because of God's mercy and His grace. He withholds from the world, from us. Because He gives you ample amount of time. I can show you through the scripture over and over where God held back stood back for his people. He put him in prison for 70 years. Israel was in Babylon for 70 years. You think that God didn't put him over there? Why did he put him? Because they were bad people? No, because it was a merciful time. It was something he was going to put him in a safe place and for keeping over here. And he was going to hold them there until they changed their hearts and their minds. And because the Bible says, if we repent, if we repent and turn from our wicked ways, think about it. So that tells me that we're on some type of a time frame that we are still in control. It's not because we're in control, it's because God is in control. God is in charge. God withholds his hand because of mercy. Because of mercy. And I believe that. Thank you, Jesus. Let's continue reading here. Verse 3, chapter 16 of John. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, it guarantees when the time shall come, not maybe, not possibly, but when, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said, not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. So as long as Jesus was with them, there was no need to alarm them about these things. But when he lifts off, he's reminding them here because in the scripture, in John, he says, you'll see me for a little while and then you'll see me no more. Because he talks about the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is coming. And when he comes, and so that will be the time when we step in and we're waiting. I don't know what we're waiting for. We're waiting for something, some different that the scripture's talking about when you have everything accessed to you by the Holy Spirit. You have the power. You have the authority. You have everything. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. And when he sits at the right hand of the Father, the Father pours out his Spirit. And when his Spirit is here, it's to what? To anoint us. It's here to cause us to become more equipped to do and accomplish what he, he was doing for the Father. We're not limited to win a soul. We're not limited to lay hands on the sick and then recover. We're not limited. You say, well, I see all this and I lay my hands on there. Well, anyway, I'll go back there in a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we praise you, God. Father, we praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Five, verse 5. But now I go my way <clears throat> to him that sent me. Jesus saying, I'm going to God. God sent me, my Father. And none of you ask me whether thou go or say it in English, where you're going. <laughs> but in verse 6, but because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your hearts. So they begin to weary and everything like that because of the separation, because of the absence. And I don't know if you've ever done a study before or anything on, on the Holy Spirit, because we're getting ready to talk about the Holy Spirit here. But to understand the Holy Spirit and understand the relationship between Christ and the church, Christ is a spouse to the church. We are the bride of Christ. And when he goes away, he sits at the right hand of the Father, he sends the Holy Spirit. And his bride knew that there was going to be a separation. This Jesus knew that they were going to need encouragement. And so he sends a gift, like one would send encouragement or a gift to a bride that's been just been separated from him. 
There's being separated, and in this gift was the Holy Spirit. That's what he gave the bride. This is what he has given us, the Holy Spirit. Today we recognize this day. We recognize that this is Pentecost Sunday. We recognize that God is still moving, he's still flowing, that the Holy Spirit has not changed his mission. But he says when, when he comes, he, will not only, he won't speak of himself, but he will speak of what the Father says and what the Son says. And so we need to understand what the Holy Spirit... It's not time to put him on the shelf. It's not time to, to, to make him something that he's not. It's time to recognize that he's God. He's the third person of God and the power that he has and the purpose that he has because we're not going to make it through this time unless we are operating and functioning by the Holy Spirit. Me and David were talking a little bit before service. And it doesn't matter what denomination you are, if you are a born-again child of God or claim to be a born-again child of God, you have to be Pentecost. And I'll make that clear. I'm not talking about Pentecostal Church of God. I'm not talking about Pentecostal holiness. I'm talking about the experience of Pentecost. The experience of Pentecost, because they're not saved. If they deny the Holy Spirit, they're not saved. Let's just be blunt about the whole thing. Because the only way salvation comes is through the Spirit of God, by Christ, through the Spirit of God. And if you deny the Spirit, then you deny any access whatsoever to becoming a child of God or being part of the church. I listened to Newsom the other day, Governor Newsom, for all respect to him. I listened to him the other day, and he began to talk about, in the Bible it says, about the, 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 the body, the, about the body. The body's not all the people in the world. The body is of Jesus Christ. There is only one, and those, those that go under the, come through the way of salvation and come in, under his surrender, that's the body of Christ. Not everybody's a body. And I don't mind hearing that this morning. I'm tired of people twisting the word. Don't take the word of God and twist it. They want to use against us. They call us not essential. But they use, they use our word for their avenue. But I dare declare today that Jesus Christ and Him alone, and we are the body of Christ, we are essential. We are the children of God, and we're the church that is coming back with, without spot or wrinkle. We are that church. We are that organism. We're not something that just hangs on the shelf. We're not somebody over here that's an entertainment or an alcohol or a drug or an item. We are the body of Christ. I am a child of the living God. I think I've got a lot wrapped up in here. Thank you, Jesus. Tripping all over this court. Thank you, Jesus. I guess we're supposed to be in one accord, huh? I'm going to be, maybe I'm going to be on my face in a minute. <laughs> Walking into this thing. But it's time that we stand up and declare. And I don't know what that, I don't know what that uh, says about me. I don't know what that says about me. And I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm not making no statements or nothing. But I'll fight going down. Let's just put it that way. And I don't mean physically. I will be on my knees. I will be in the word. I will be listening to what the spirit of God says to me. I would declare the word of God. I would declare his goodness and his mercy and his righteousness and his grace. I will declare that it's time that the church rises up and begin to do such a such as this. Begin to say, you know what? This is just a matter of the way it is. This is. Jesus is coming back. And I say it to the church today. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And it won't be very long. It used to be an old song kind of like that. It won't be like very long. For all his children. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to. Thank you, Lord. Anyway, so verse 7. Here he goes now. He tells you and he warns you and he tells them that you're feeling sorrowful and everything. Now he's going to tell you what the remedy of that, for that sorrowful feeling that you're feeling and that hopelessness that you're feeling. Verse 7, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more. Of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come. 
He will guide you into all truth. And he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. Not selected things to come, things to come. He will show you what you're faced with. He will show you what's going on right now. We don't have to know everything about everything. But he will show you the things that are pertinent to your journey that you're traveling when you're submitted to him. You don't need to know what I'm battling with. You don't need to know where I'm going to make my next turn. You need to know where you're making your next turn. Because we walk by faith and that's without sight. That means we're walking and we're trusting the Lord. No matter what things are before us, we're going to trust you. I'm going to trust you, God. What am I going to trust, God? You're going to give me that car. You're going to give me that job, God. You're going to make sure my bank account's full, that I, I get that house that I want, or that I don't face any sickness, or I don't face any loss with, uh, with any loved ones or anything. No, he guarantees us peace. He guarantees us a home in heaven. He guarantees us salvation, peace with God. That's what it's all about. The world can't buy it. The, king, the world don't understand it. And that's just the way it is. It's up to us to let them know. But at the same time, we understand it. That's the greatest privilege. Nobody can buy it. Nobody can sell it. Nobody can trade it. It's only a free gift from God. And that's what we need to understand. It's not, I'm not preaching a salvation message to you this morning. I'm preaching a position that you stand in because of what he's done. Because of who he is. Because you're his child. Nothing should move you, no matter what it is. Don't let the, the biggest thing move you or the smallest thing move you. It's time that we make a stand and say, you know what, Lord? I'm just following you. However you lead me, I will follow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 14. He shall glorify me, or he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore, said I, that he shall take of mine and show it unto you. A while you shall not see me. And again, a little while. And ye shall see me because I go to the Father. This is where Jesus is talking about. This is where he says when they, don't, they didn't understand. In a little while you're not going to see me. But then in a little while you're going to see me. And he's talking about because I'm going to the Father and you're not going to see me, but the Holy Spirit's going to come as a representation of who I am and what we're doing and what our mission is to accomplish. Jesus had to go away. Jesus was sanctified. He was pure. He was holy. He was accepted of the Father. And as he sat at the right hand of the Father, the mantle was passed down to the church by the pouring out of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He empowered the church. And that's what we have today, is the empowering of the church. I don't want to sit for any less than, than who I am or what I am. I'm a Stankowitz, and I'm glad to be a Stankowitz. And I'll fight anybody that wants to tell me. I won't. But I'll fight anybody that tells me that I'm not a Stankowitz. But the more, I will die for the cause of Christ. And I will stand in the position that I need to stand to declare who he is. There are things worth fighting for. Stankless might not be the thing worth fighting for, but this here is worth fighting for. It's not a time to take a back seat. It's not time to pull back. It's not time to get frustrated. It's not time to get fearful. It's not time to struggle. It's not time to let those little things that keep you from being who God's called you to be to annoy you, whether it's fear, agitation, or whatever, whether it's with somebody or not with somebody, whether it's battles in your yourself. Those things need to be set aside. You say you're pretty bold today. They're truth. I'm telling you, that's the word of God. It's the truth. It always sounds hard when it comes out of my mouth. I think somebody probably, probably said it a lot nicer than me. But I'm adamant about truth. I'm adamant about desperation. We're desperate people. Without God, we're totally desperate. I want to keep my desperation to keep me moving forward. I'm desperate for God. I want to be sold out to God. I want people to know that I trust God. I want people to know that when I say something, that's just the way it is. As long as it's according to the word. Thank you, Jesus. You got to stand your ground. Stand your ground. And I believe that. And I believe if we ever do it, I mean, I'm praying, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Am I doing enough, Lord? I'm a very aggressive person. And I don't think it was 
just something that I did or somewhere I came from. And I believe I play a big part in this thing. Not to be seen, not to be heard, but to stand. To stand, and that's all. Whether you have anything to say, stand. Stand in the liberty. Thank you, Jesus. But if I can just lighten up the load here for a minute and just talk to you. Jesus is coming. Amen. Yeah. And everything that you've been through is not just a waste. It was a survival thing, but you've grown. I believe you've grown. I believe you've stepped out and you, you've stepped out into a, a place that you're not comfortable with, a place where you're not used to. Like Peter, he steps out of the boat. He wasn't somewhere he was used to, even though he knew the waters and knew the fish and the boats. That was new ground for him to step out there on the water. I don't think he ever went fishing out there without a boat. But sometimes things require us to step out, but I believe we're, I, I believe today Today, I believe today, as the Holy Spirit begins to move us this morning, I believe you're going to be shocked and surprised in the week coming to see that God is equipping you, God is moving you, and you're just going to be almost like this because he's going to be doing the work. The things you've struggled with, the things you've battled with, I believe you're going to find out it's a lot easier because he's doing it. I'm not where I'm, I am right now because of my choices. Yes, I had to make a choice to serve God. But at the same time, God's been going like this. It ain't been comfortable. It ain't been fun. None of us, I think any of us that have gone through things in this last year, it hasn't been fun. It hasn't been comfortable. He's been doing it for a while. He's shaking us. He's moving us. Jonathan Kahn said last year as a prophecy for this year, 2020, that there would be a shaking. And that's nothing we've seen like this in our entire life. We've seen stages of it. We've seen the stuff. We didn't see it. But we've read about the Civil War. We've seen Vietnam. We've seen the riots. We've seen all of these things. We've seen abortion at, 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 at a, a level, but we've never seen everything this high. This is high. Let's remember to pray for those people that are out there, not only the ones that become victim, but those that are doing it. We don't have that position to sit there and say, well, I'm not going to pray for you, and I'm going to pray for you, and I'm not going to pray for you, and I'm going to pray for you. We're going to pray for everybody. We have to stay neutral because he's the judge. We're not the judge. Even though we know, may know it's wrong and see, I'm just telling you things that is going to help you in the days to come. If you remember to trust God, don't be selfish, be respectful of one another and pray and read God's word. That's what I'm talking about this morning. I just felt like I just needed to set you up for success. This morning, a lot of you know it already, but I'm just confirming what you already know this morning. I believe that. I'm just confirming what God has been talking to you this morning. Thank you, Jesus.